Hey everybody, it's Jessica Alstrom, and I wanted to bring you guys a very special energy update. I usually wait uh, for second Sundays to do my energy broadcast, but things are just changing so quick, and I know everybody is eager and excited about the world getting back online. Um, some places of the world are still in full lockdown, where other places are kind of a little bit uh, starting to give a little. So I thought I would go live and give you guys an inside scoop energetically on how you can manifest the reality that you're all um, wanting at this point. And in order for me to kind of give you the 411 on how to do that, I got to take you back a little bit. In 2016, I predicted that Trump would get into office for a very important reason. Um, it, it has no it has nothing to do with preference on who this man is as far as our US president, but the significance and the vibration of the choice was very important, and here is why. I talked about a world of self-government, okay? A world where we self-governed our integrity, our morals, and our actions. I told you that was gonna be the future of our society, that we were gonna be moving into a higher dimensional awareness uh, plane where we were responsible enough, the ability to respond, to take care of ourselves without having to be ruled and governed by an outside force such as political involvement, right? But in order to do that, we have to be able to trust ourselves. And in order for us to trust ourselves, we have to take our power back. So this COVID-19 worldwide uh, epidemic, pandemic, whatever you want to call it, has been a fast forward detour into our path of least resistance. It has allowed us to slow down and get back to our factory settings. And what are your factory settings? What was your life like before this whole lockdown happened? Before you were quarantined into your homes, before some of your jobs were taken away, um, before some of you had to go to work, before you know the school got let out, what was your vibe? What were you, what were you focused on? Well, most of the planet was focused on the next moment, surviving the next moment, getting to the future, planning the next trip, paying your bills, keeping your kids okay, working on your hopes and dreams, trying to make a difference, you know, doing the best that you could with your, with your own, um, you know, self-guidance. And a lot of times when the process of us being busy takes over our lives, we lose a huge amount of our intuition. So when, our, when we get our factory settings turned back, what that looks like is our natural state. Our natural state is not busyness, anxiety, panic, and survival. Our natural state as humans is not fear. We are human beings, not human doings. And we are actually on the planet to be. What are we supposed to be? Obviously be loved, but that's a big trigger word for some of you who have been hurt, abandoned, and rejected. So let me give you an easier uh, idea of what your factory settings were before the world told you who you were and what you weren't allowed to do. Your natural state of being is joy. And joy is the state of childhood before the childhood was ripped away from us until we were forced into adulthood and most of us still don't know how to be adults. And then we had to act like we knew what was going on and do the best that we could to parent in love when most of us were raised in fear. Uh, our society was raised in fear, although we had a huge amount of technology and education to back up a world to not be in fear, the world was in fear. And like attracts like, guys, we had to track something bigger than ourselves to basically pull the plug on the art of doing, which is what we were so consumed with. Now, I'm not going to get into any of the dark side of the significance of today's talk, because really what it is about is who you are and what you have access to right now in your reality to make a difference, to make a choice, and to get your life back online. Everything that's happening is a little bit Star Wars, if you would not disagree with me, right? It feels very much like there's a dark force in work and there feels like there's very much a light. And in this case, we are the rebellion. We are the ones who are rebelling and taking our power back. And in order for us to move into a self-government government, government uh, more um, mentality and mindset first before we can take it into a physical action, we have to get really good with ourselves. Because what has happened is we have for a long time given our power away. Um, not always by choice, 
you know, sometimes we've had to force our power away through our religious beliefs or our economic background. Sometimes it's been about our color of our skin. Sometimes it's about where we are born on the planet. But as creators, all we needed was a reset switch because inside your DNA contains an unlimited source of knowledge, abundance, and freedom that is at a core level deep within you, the memories of who you are as a soul. I talked a little bit on Easter how the resurrection of the human soul was going to be activated on the night of, of, of Easter. And if you guys notice, if you can just spin the clock back a little bit, one week, two weeks tops, that's when, when everything started to kind of feel like a shift was happening. Now, what happens when the human spirit begins to resurrect, where the ego kind of loosens its grip and says, okay, maybe I don't have to be perfect. Maybe I don't need all of these things. Maybe I don't need all of these unessential things in order to be happy. Maybe I can just spend time with my loved ones. Maybe I realize once something is gone, how much I appreciate and love it. Maybe I'm realizing that in order for me to get to know who I really am is not by investing more in myself as far as how I look and what I have, but to sit back in the stillness of my own imagination and learn to pretend again, learn to laugh again, learn to be still again, learn to be lazy again and not feel guilty about it, right? When was the last time you guys felt really, you know, okay with not doing anything, right? It was like 2019, if you sit on the couch and you watch Netflix all day, you're a lazy bum, and this year you're saving the world. So it's all about perspective. And with that being said, what we wanna understand is that our time is now. I have been saying this since 2012, if not before, this is what we have been gearing up for. We have been gearing up for the Star Wars episode of the century where we learn to use the force. Yeah, of course, we're playing against an opponent. No game would be amazing without an opponent. We are playing against um, uh, organization, corporations, and a big business that doesn't want us to self-govern. But at the same time, the world is waking up, and I know you can all feel that. You can all feel that you are waking up from the dream of having to be afraid. You're waking up from the dream that you need to be controlled and guided in order to be safe. You're waking up from the dream that you are supposed to do anything other than create joy, happiness, love, passion, and abundance in your life. What that looks like to each individual, I'm sure you've been on a soul's journey the last couple of months. I said in January, we were going on a vision quest, the whole planet, individual vision quest, vision quest and collective vision quest. That vision quest had nothing to do with leaving our homes and setting out to find ourselves. It was about leaving our reality and going home, finding the resonant cord of your soul and activating that eternal switch that takes us back to our factory settings of joy, happiness, bliss, abundance, and freedom. So how can we create that? Well, if you've looked around your neighborhood in the last week, what you will notice is that as those factory settings go back to that neutral point, as you start to be comfortable again with who you are, you start to shake off the fear. You start to go outside. You start to say, do I really need this mask? Do I really need these gloves? Or is my immune system strong enough to protect me from a little stronger flu-like symptoms? Even though the, the news reports are reporting fatalities and huge amounts of cases all over the world. If you ask your doctors, if you ask your nurses, if you ask your neighbors who is really sick, what is really going on, you're beginning to question who and what you believe. And the reason why we needed this to happen was not so that the world would go be terrified of a virus, so that we'd realize that we manifested the, the virus of power versus love that we lost sight of who we were as creators, as people who were here to create their reality and build a civilization built in unity. We were all separate from each other. We were all judging each other and we were all one-upping each other with this mask to prove that we were who we say we were when behind closed doors, we're nothing. We're, we're hiding behind our insecurities, our lack of abundance, our lack of knowledge, 
And we're losing ourselves to the society that has been governed out of alignment. Now, the coolest thing about the United States electing a man like Trump, for whatever reason, whether you're pro-Trump or un-pro-Trump, whatever, you have to realize that he is serving a very important, very important purpose. He is reflecting back to you what the human ego looks like. Now, it takes fire to fight fire. So I do think we have the right man in the right space right now to go against the opposing forces because it does take a thug to win thugs. Guys, come on, he's a businessman. And he does want what we want, but the way he's dis displaying it, every single one of you, even if you're pro-Trump, has thought at one moment or another, I could do a better job in office than that. And that is what I talk about when I say self-government, all right? So we are in a state of rebellion. We are getting our power back. We are bored. Right? Boredom is actually the frequency that evokes invention. It evokes power. It evokes creativity because when you're bored, it's pretty close to a death experience if you're a child, which you all are at the base core of yourselves. And when you get bored, bored of social media, bored of the 15 snacks, bored of the 25 naps, bored of looking out your window, bored of walking around the park, bored of going to the grocery store. When you get bored of all those things, and you realize, well, toilet paper came back and some of the beaches are opening. Maybe things are not as bad as we think. Now, those of you who are in fear are probably throwing tomatoes at the screen right now at me, and that's okay. You're allowed your belief systems and I honor you. I honor your fear and I honor your ch choice to be afraid. And if you're listening to the news all day, I can guarantee you that you don't know what to believe at this point. And you're probably terrified of leaving the house even when the world opens up. And that is your choice. But for those of you who have been on the fence or have finally moved over to the side where you're ready to take your power back, be strong, take great care of your body so you've got a good immune system and get on with your lives now that you've returned back to yourself, this message is for you. So how do we accomplish the beginnings of the rebellion? How do we accomplish taking our power back when we have no power? How can we self-govern in a society that is still ruled by royals and presidents and government, okay? How can we take our power back? Well, as creators, we have one thing that trumps all things, and that is our imagination. Our imagination defined through the quantum field of possibilities is I imagine my nation. I am magician. I create my own reality. So what kind of reality do you want now that we're at this zero point? Now that you've de-stressed and you've, you know, relaxed and you've indulged and you've reconnected and you've clarified and you've awakened, what do you want to see? What do you want your kids to see? What do you want your families to see? What do you want to experience? The cards are in all of our hands individually, which makes a collective and it makes and takes a collective, a chronic thread of vibration to create a ripple effect where we all start to believe the same things, right? I put a thought into the field, you put a thought into the field. If they match, it gets bigger, okay? If they oppose, we separate. But more and more and more of us are beginning to have the same thoughts and feelings because we're returning back to our factory soul settings of joy. It's springtime here in the United States, and we all want to be outside. We want to be outside biking and enjoying the sunshine and enjoying each other and living our lives, which we have forgotten sight of. And now, once we have lost it, we are in appreciation of it. And appreciation is one of the abundance frequencies, you guys. Appreciate whatever you appreciate, appreciates. We knew that pain is one of our greatest teachers. We know loss opens our heart. We know that when we're separated from what we love, it helps us expand to what it is we want and we begin to choose from a heart space, not a head space. We are moving into the field of the heart. The heart is telepathic. It is connected by every fiber and being and, and particle in the universe and it speaks the language of love. We are getting to that place because we have had time to heal. We have time to nourish ourselves. 
So now that we can reflect on what we do want, because we sure as hell know what we don't want, what are we gonna do with this power and potential? If all I have is my imagination and my small but mighty choices, what can I do to begin the route of self-governorship? Because this is where we are heading as a collective. This is what 5D reality all is. It's endless possibilities where I am creator, connected to a community and consciousness of unity. That is what the fifth dimension all is. And for those of you who are going, what is the fifth dimension? It is a civilization that is higher frequency than a slower frequency of the third dimension, which is based in separation, loss, judgment, and survival. So if I had two planets, 3D is survive and 5D is thrive. How do you thrive? How do you thrive when you're not thriving? How do you thrive when you can't leave the house? How do you thrive when your stimulus check hasn't shown up? Well, I'm gonna give you the answers, okay? Because what you put into the universe is what you get back. What you appreciate doubles. What you buy into is profitable. What you invest in becomes. So every thought, every feeling, every action, and every choice is essential right now, which means you are essential for this magic and this transformation for us to begin to walk the walk of 5D, for us to be able to live in this new energy. We have power, you guys. We have the power of thought. We have the power of actions. We have the power of choices. And we have the power of words. What you speak, you become. What you feel, you are. Your state of being determines your, your virtual reality that you live. Some of you right now are living in absolute bliss. And some of you are living on hell and earth. We all have the same access to the same thoughts. We all have same access to the same feelings. Doesn't mean we know how to get there all the time, but we have choice. Choice is the only thing you technically own on the planet. So those are what's in your toolbox. Your thoughts, your feelings, your actions, and your words, okay? If they are in alignment with things you'd like to see get better, then you will begin to see better because in the fifth dimension, we start to have the instant manifestation. We start to think it and be it, right? Be it instantly <clears throat> so what else can we do what else is an act of rebellion how else may i be an anarchist of love how can i show up and be confident and diligent in my hopes and dreams well i can start working on my hopes and dreams i may not be able to build a wellness center right now but i could be the architect of one I could draw it out, I could plan it, I could virtually live there, I could dream about it, I could tell other people about it, I could get people excited, I could build the momentum in the non-physical universe and plant the seeds and germinate the seeds and water the seeds and sunshine the seeds and boom. All of a sudden, when I've done the work preparing, I have prepared, then all of a sudden I have moved that atomic energy into a vibration where now it can become matter and I can step out and manifest my dreams when the quarantine just suddenly disappears, which you guys are gonna notice that it just flips away on you. There's a lot of really amazing things loosening up. We are at the end of this spiritual war, you guys. This spiritual war has been going on for hundreds of years on this planet. It is in the ethers, it is in the undergrounds, it is in the underworld, it is in the governments, it is in the secret families, it is in the societies you know nothing about. You may get a small smidgen of information through Hollywood or the medical industry or the food industry or the pharmaceutical industry, but you really don't know what's going on and you really don't need to if you're not part of that council in the physical reality. In the physical reality, your job is to manifest your dream reality. That's what builds heaven on earth. Our job is to step forward and build the reality we want, even though we're bound and limited to our homes right now. We have our imagination. We have our words, our choices, our actions. Who are you to your family right now? Who are you to yourself? Self-love is to get in the heaven free card, right? has nothing to do with shame and guilt or how many people you've saved on the planet. It doesn't matter how much money you've given to any church. It just means, do you love thyself? Because if you love yourself, you love everyone. If you love yourself, you love nature. If you love yourself, you love God, because you are. You are the essence of that. And on the road to self-love, we have to remember that we don't need a mask to be authentic, that we don't need to be perfect 
to be authentic and loved and received. We don't need to be successful in the third dimensional definition. We don't need to have a lot of money. We don't need to have too much time. And we don't need to have endless amounts of busyness to keep us distracted from the pain in our heart. But we do need time to reflect within ourselves. We need to get right with ourselves. That's number one. Because when you get right with yourselves, you activate the essential piece of intuition, which is trust. And when you get online with your trust in your gut and you start making choices from your heart and your gut, you are not afraid. You're only afraid when you're thinking with your mind. You're afraid of the memories of what has happened in the past and fear of what could happen. But when you're in the present moment, you are owning the magic of the non-physical universe and you are owning the potential of the quantum field. You can be whatever it is you want to be. Now, it might not look like you have a choice at all. You have no money in your bank account, but that means nothing. Circumstances don't matter. Only state of being matters because you are a vibrational magnetic being. And as soon as you get out of fear and judgment and worry and doubt and shame and guilt and humiliation, which is the plugins for the third dimension that keep you in slavery and keep you surviving, when you unplug from that matrix and you plug into the divine matrix of the quantum field of possibilities where anything is possible and you are completely unlimited, you begin to make different choices. You begin to forget your mask. You for, forget that you need to hide from people. You're immediately remembering that it's okay for you to hug. It's okay for you to get in your car and go to the park and sit on the ground. It's okay for you to talk to people if you feel safe to do it. Because if you are creating your own reality, you're also creating your own health line. You're creating the immunity that is in your skin and your body and your brains and your heart. You are creating that. And you are generating a feeling of trust knowing yourself. This is what I've witnessed over the last week. The first day after Easter, I live in the Midwest, which is very, very, very much about the Bible Belt. And so there's a lot of old dogma and old belief systems here. There's also an insane, amazing, a spiritual community here as well, but you know, it's all about duality. And the day after Easter, I noticed that when I went into the grocery store, only about 1% of everybody in there had a mask on. And I thought, well, in quantum, we always ask what's different. What's different is out of 100 people that were in that vicinity, maybe four people had a mask, maybe 10 tops. Mm, I wouldn't even say 10, maybe five. And half of the workers didn't even have it. Okay, now some of you are like, ah, well, please turn me off if I'm, if I'm terrifying you. I'm talking to the people who have moved past the fear and are ready to get on with their lives, okay? So that was the first thing that I noticed that was different, okay? Then I noticed that there was people starting to pick it to get their jobs back. What does that mean? That means they're not afraid. They're, you know, give me my job back. This is ridiculous. Okay, we've had enough time to get back to our factory settings. We get that this is a global reset. We get that this is a reboot. We get that we had to get out of our heads and get into our hearts. We're there. We're ready to go back to work. All right. Well, then this, uh, the beaches start to open. And then this starts to open. And then this starts to open. But notice in the political regions how security is getting much tighter. You know, one of my beautiful clients who lives near a political region has to have a mandatory mask on right now. So she's going to be even more limited in this creation process than anyone else who doesn't live in those places, but she can still have major, major choice because no one can control your mind. And your mind, your heart, and your gut, your me, myself, and I, your mind, body, and soul can collaborate and create any universe that you desire. So how can you take action to show the universe you're ready for your new life? What can you do to in, 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 invoke and create a a new community, a new life, a new world where it is safe for you to self-govern? Well, first of all, you can start making your own choices. That's number one in self-governorship. Make your own choices. Not what is legal, but what is right. Not what is legal, but what is right for you. What is right for you, right? Take back that power and start making choices based in you. You're saying, well, I don't wanna go to jail. Well, I am asking you guys to basically Break as many legal rules as you can, okay? Which means if things are not illegal, but they're frowned upon, you should be doing them. Because if you can do them with confidence, you put that power back that we can do this ourselves. 
So break as many rules, as many laws that are legal, okay? Because what this does is it overthrows gently through love an old system. Okay, buy local, buy local. Put the big, 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 big businesses out and bring the, the home back to the community. Now, if you work for a big, big, big business, you're going, no, Jess, don't say that. But I can guarantee you that there, if you work for a big business, you are a big business. And it's time for you to start your big business. Because if you're working for a big business and you can hear my voice, you're probably a badass who needs to be an entrepreneur or needs to go work for a small big business that is about the people, for the people, right? Shop local, barter. Learn the power of exchange, right? Do some life coaching for, for your haircut. Whatever it takes to move away from the need of the dollar, move away from the need of the dollar, okay? Now, you don't have to do this for everything, but it would be a good idea for you to practice the art because it opens up your magical sense of intuition and it opens up your field of abundance when you're giving and receiving, giving and receiving, okay? So that's one of the formulas for abundance for us to move out of this old paradigm of this very controlled federal reserve system of money that manufactures its own paper while keeping the people in debt, moves us away from that control and puts us back into power of money, of time, of abundance, okay? What else can we do? I have a whole bunch of notes that just came through a stream of consciousness. Um, work on your own mental health. This is a great time to get a therapist, a life coach, a mentor, right? You've got the time. If there's blind sides or shadows or um, blind spots in your vibration that you can't find that are holding you back that feels like walls, invest in yourself or go on a journey to make sure that your mental health is at a state of at least boredom or above so you can shift into your natural state, which is joy of creating, okay? Get creative again. Pull out your easel, pull out your arts. I'm sure you've already done this because you guys have gotten to the point where you are now reconnecting with your inner child on a very big way. Your inner child has the frequency of the new earth. Your inner child is the one who's going to imagine, I imagine my nation, you all the way into the gates, okay? All right, understand the difference between connection versus attachment. Anything that you are attached to holds an anchor to you in your old life. So work on removing attachments and change them into connections, which means you're going to take the word need away and you're going to place it with want. Okay? Do you need your job or do you want your job? If you need your job, you've got lack of energy and you need to clear the lack of abundance timelines in your body, your biological memories, your cellular memory that you could possibly be in lack when it goes and defies your birthright of an abundant soul, okay? So working on letting go of attachments, which is the universe has done a lot of that for you, working on it within your own reality. This is an act of rebellion. Letting go of codependency, letting go of attachments, moving into connection. Another act of rebellion is surrender. You're not waving the white flag saying I have failed. You're saying I surrender to my higher power. I surrender to my higher self. I surrender to my heart, which knows what I need even if it doesn't make sense. That is an act of rebellion and it is within your power no matter where you are and no matter if you have to wear a mask or not, surrender to it. Another thing, an act of rebellion, you guys, and this goes for my spiritual community, you guys tend to judge quite heavily. Stop judging people's belief systems. If people are afraid, love them. Don't judge them. Don't put them down for being afraid. Don't criticize them for being afraid. Don't criticize them when they criticize you. You have to understand that fear comes from a very unconscious place, very unconscious place. And if a child was unconscious, would you shame it because they were afraid of the dark? Would you humiliate them? Would you think less of them? This isn't how we're going to move into higher frequencies, guys. This isn't how we're gonna get to heaven on earth is by judging people who are afraid right? Yeah, so your mom watches the news all day and she's popping pharmaceutical pills. Love her. Love her where she is. Love her how she is. Wear your mask to her house. Throw her a bone. 
right? Stop scaring and terrifying the poor woman because you have these higher belief systems. Just honor your families right now, but it doesn't mean you have to buy into it. Doesn't mean that you're giving away your power if you're showing up at your mom's house with a mask because she's gonna feel better, right? I told my kids I was hopping on an airplane next week and they're like, mom, please wear a mask. And I'm like, you betcha, because that makes them feel safe. I live in a different universe where I'm safe no matter what because I'm an alchemist. But in my children's work, they're worried about their mama. So I will honor their belief. And that is an act of rebellion, is to honor someone else's belief systems, even if it doesn't match yours. Very important, you guys, because it raises your vibration when you're in a state of love, even if you don't identify or have the same belief system. Okay? Lots more. Um, spend money on investing in yourselves, joy, and experiential joy. Okay, this raises your frequency and it moves you into self-governorship. Don't be hoarding toilet paper. Go buy yourself some new running shoes or, you know, that new music that you're looking for. What's going to raise your vibration? You know, this would be a good time to finish up your yoga certification or your life coaching certification or whatever it is, because this is going to propel you. What are you investing in right now with money? Investing in yourself, which means you get a product or you get an expansion from your money spent. This is important because if you're spending money on endless urges that actually contract your energy field, you're moving backwards, not forward. So when you spend money on investment of yourself, you propel in the future, okay? Also, joy raises your frequency because it's your natural state. So when you spend money on joyful experiences, you actually move into a higher field of consciousness without guilt and shame, of course, because guilt and shame is your old program. We're not in guilt and shame because we've returned back to the child who deserves everything. The true definition of worthiness is I am allowed. I am allowed to be myself. I am allowed to have what I want. I'm allowed to be who I am because I'm in a state of love. I will not hurt anyone even while I'm being completely authentically me. All right. Um, notice where you are abundant. This is important. Notice where you're abundant right now, even though you feel like you've lost a lot. Notice that people are one face call away. Notice that, that people have re, re, um, come back into your life and are making amends. Notice how heart, your heart full you are, how full your heart feels with the abundance that you have. Because abundance is the ability to do what you wanna do with whom you wanna do it, where you wanna do it with, but until you can get out of the house, you can pretend, you can do it on the, virtual chats. You can meet at the park and wave if so. I've been throwing parties this whole time, so put me in handcuffs, right? I'm having retreats. I'm throwing parties. I'm living my life, and I've not as much had one sniffle because I am the creator of my nervous system and my immune system, and so is everyone around me, all right? Stop. Stop following the rules that you're allowed to break, right? Nobody's enforcing anything except where you're being enforced. Now, you have to follow those rules, but you try to break the rules like an artist, which means where can I create freedom while I'm being trapped? This is a very important frequency, especially if you're in a bad relationship right now, okay? Knowledge is power. You guys, if you're afraid of this virus, please learn about your bodies. Your bodies are a biological quantum powerhouse that is designed to heal always. Unless you're in a constant state of fight or flight, okay? You're in a constant state of worry, constant state of anxiety, you know, on too many pharmaceutical drugs, these things will lower your immunity and make you susceptible to germs or anything like that. But if you get to know your body and study your body, you should know as much as a doctor. You should be your own nutritionist. You should be your own life coach. And I know I'm saying should, but this is an act of self governance because if I know what is going to make my body healthy, I don't need anybody else's advice, which means I don't have to exchange my dollars because I'm in fear of my own body. So another act of rebellion, you guys, is learn the body correctly, not from your Western medicine world, but from your ancient textbooks, Eastern medicine, holistic medicine, universal medicine, quantum medicine. These are the systems that are designed to teach you to become the creator of your own reality, which is your biological computer. This body is designed 
to do whatever the servant or as a servant, whatever the master, the master teaches it to do. So you've got to take power over that and say, I love you. I'm going to take care of you because a body that's loved, a body that's loved by the owner of the body is a very healthy body, a body that knows its place to service the journey as the vessel of the soul is a very healthy body. A body that has a soul that's checked out, that's living in the past and future is a sick body. And that is your responsibility. It is not your doctor's responsibility. It is not your therapist's responsibility. It is yours. So it's an act of rebellion, rebellion taking that power back. All right, get your body moving. When you move your body, you release a huge amount of endorphins. You, you release a huge amount of healthy hormones that give you the upper effect, okay? Do breath work. Breath work brings spirit into your body. It's like ego has to get out of the driver's side seat. Spirit gets in, takes over, and has completely different thinking, feeling, and action behavior. If you want to get present, do breath work. It will also bring up any triggers, shadows that need to be cleared so that you can lighten up because 5D is about lightening up. Laugh. Watch comedy. You got tons of time on your hands. Laugh. Remember how hard you used to laugh. If you're not laughing till you're peeing your pants, you're not living. Laughing is a very high frequency, and right now it's an act of rebellion. So laugh. Get with the people who make you feel like you're losing time and space because everything is so amazing, right? Let go of toxic relationships. This will lighten you up. This is an act of rebellion because you're not obligated to anyone who hurts you. You're not obligated to anyone who makes you small. It's an act of rebellion and self-governorship by cutting the cord of codependency away from toxic relationships. This is all how we're gonna do this. Okay, all right. I think that is pretty much it as far as all my tips and techniques to get us into self-governorship, even though we're on lockdown, even though we're in quarantine, there's lots of little, little shifts and changes you can make in your daily mindsets and your actions and your goals about who you are. Take a look around. The world is going, yeah, I'm not so afraid anymore. Went to the park yesterday. There was no parking. It was completely packed. Very few people had masks on. There was hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people at the park. Now, no restaurants were open, but you could get takeout. So people were taking out. They were sitting together, they were hanging together. And this is right here in the Midwest. So it's a matter of time until you change your mindset and move away from fear and into love. And once you get to love, you will remember there's nothing to fear. You will remember that there is no virus that's bigger than you. You will, you will remember that money is your birthright and whatever form of money, whether it's barter and trade or acts of service or whatever you discover is your highest joy to create, you will draw that in because you're electromagnetic energy that is designed to attract what you are matched to. So what are you attracted to and what are you a match to right now? This is a good time for you to take inventory, take stock, and really let go of anything that's not serving you so you can lighten up. As soon as you lighten up, you're going to remember, remember, put yourself back together, that you are here to give and receive love, to create amazing, unique experiences for yourself, to go on adventures, to commune with like-minded people, to have experiences where you can share those unique, that unique toolbox within you and express it, not wait for it. Most of you have been waiting for your lives to start. Well, this is the time. As soon as you start preparing, practicing and playing. Prepare, practice and play and integrate those new beliefs as an act of rebellion and an act of self-government. Government, we will manifest an opportunity for us to help the government through self-governorship, which means we will attract an office that it has for the people, not for the money, not for the drugs, not for the separation. But we have to do that first, you guys. If you look in the mirror and you ask it to smile, it cannot smile until you smile. The world cannot change until you act out what it is you want to see in the world. If you want judgment to end, stop judging people that are below you. 
that are beneath you, that are less educated than you. Stop judging people who are afraid because you know what? They're terrified and they're not doing it on purpose. They just don't know any better right now. They don't have the information that you, don't, you have. They don't have the awareness that you have. So stop lowering your vibration to judge them and love them, support them, nurturing them, not rescuing them, holding space for them, but honoring their belief systems when you're around them, okay? Because you don't wake anybody up by judging them. You wake people up by loving them. So if you want your family to wake up, love them for exactly what they believe and honor those belief systems when you're in their presence. And when you're in your own presence, honor your own belief systems, okay? You're bigger than that. Love it. Trade, buy local, invest in small business, invest in yourself, invest in technologies that are going to bring us all together. And take a look at the business model that you're stuck in and ask, is this my highest joy? Is this what my soul wants to do for the rest of my life? Take a deep breath, do your breath work, really pressurize any emotional garbage that's left in your body, heal and move forward. It's time for us to rebel against a broken system and take our time back, our money back, our health back and move into divine partnership-based relationships that are built out of love and faith and connection and trust and freedom. Relationships where we don't have to lose ourselves. This is where we're heading, guys, and you can make this happen faster by what you think, do, and feel every single day, no matter where you are or what mask you have to wear. You have the power wherever you are right now to participate in this. And the more people who act out this now, it will manifest faster because you guys are, can already see we're heading here. We're already going to have to get new curriculum for our schools because the old, the old cities, sorry, I'm talking too fast for my brain. The old cities and the old civilizations are rising up and we are going to have to reteach our children based in quantum theory and not lack and separation and dogma and bullshit history, the truth of what this planet is, which is Earth is our living library. It is the center point of the universe that holds the data of all of our cosmic expansions. It is the Akashic records manifested. The, the, it is this space that we are here to live with, take care of, and vibrate with. All right? Thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you got a nugget of this. I will be in full rebellion. I will be breaking as many rules that are legal. And I will be loving all of you guys, no matter exactly where you are and what you believe, regardless of where that is. And in that, I ask you to do the same. And maybe this time in two weeks, we'll be able to gather again and move forward with the new direction of appreciation and gratitude for what we've always had right in front of us. All right. Thank you guys so much. And I'll see you soon.